Hello everyone, welcome to Nana's Tiny Kitchen. Uh, today I'm going to do, be doing a special recipe for two friends of mine who um, Jeff and I were over having dinner uh, next door and we ran into them and we were kind of talking about food, of course, because I'm always talking about food. But um, we were talking about bagels and how to make a really good bagel. So I was like, I have a recipe on there for the New York style bagel. This bagel is a little bit different, but I thought it was better. I mean, I'm always messing around with recipes, trying to come up with the ultimate pizza, the best bagel. I live in upstate New York, and that's not always available to us. That's, I miss Long Island because of those things, because we can get really good pizza, and we can get really good bagels. And then people say, well, it has something to do with the water. No, nah, I don't think so, because in the city where they have really good bagels, they get their water from where? Upstate New York. So um, that can't be the excuse. So I'm going to show my friends, Pete and Carol, how to make really good bagels. Now, for this recipe, you're going to need overnight. So if you know you want bagels on a Sunday or a Saturday, just do it the day before, make the dough the day before. Just stick it in the refrigerator and it does its thing. It's just a matter of putting it together. So let's get started. Okay, in my mixer, um, I'm going to be using, this is measured out two and a quarter cups of to the touch warm water. Don't want it too warm because we don't want to kill the yeast. That's very important. We just want it, say like a room temperature. And I have one packet. You know how you buy the packets, they come in the three. And I have one packet of yeast that I'm gonna measure out for now a teaspoon out of this. Now one of these packets usually holds about two and a quarter teaspoons. So I'm gonna measure out one teaspoon and just place that in here. Now, we're gonna be adding more yeast after, but for now, this is all that goes in there. And now I have measured out three cups of bread flour. Now, it's very important that you use bread flour. It's got a higher gluten. It's where you get your chewy from. Um, but this one, it makes a lot. So this is only three quarters of the flour that's actually gonna go in this recipe when all said and done. Where's my tablespoon? Now I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of honey. And yes, this is Jeff's honey from his bees. Yeah, this dough, it's, it's a little bit on the sweet side, but not too sweet. You get that gorgeous crunch on the outside and the chewy on the inside. Oh, it's so good. And all the ingredients for making bagels, such as like sesame seeds and, and the everything bagels, you could go to your market and they actually have this stuff already in the jar. Like everything that you would need for an everything bagel. Or you buy the toasted sesame seeds anywhere where they sell and where they have the spices. So, I'm going to get this mixed up. And what we want to do is we want to activate this yeast. We want to get it blooming. So I'm going to add the flour a little bit at a time. Okay, that's my three cups. And if you can, get an unbleached flour. Why would you buy a bleached flour? I mean, try to get organic. I know it's really expensive. Sometimes I, I don't always get the organic, but I definitely do get the unbleached flour. There is no difference in the taste. It's just better for you. So we're going to let this mix for a couple of minutes and then we're going to cover this and set it aside for a good 10-15 minutes. You can put it in your refrigerator, but you really don't have to. It's going to be on the runny side because, like I said, we didn't add all our flour yet to this. But we do want to get it mixed up really good. Let me get my spatula. I'm standing over my stove right now, and in the oven is 
because tomorrow is Easter. I wanted to do a, a video of uh, the fresh baked ham, and that's what I'm smelling right now. It's like, oh my god, it's so good. Okay, we want to let all of our ingredients combine. We don't want to over mix. We just want everything nice and combined. Now I'm going to show you. Where's my spatula so I'm not dripping everywhere? I cook a lot of food in this tiny kitchen. So I don't want to hear any excuses about why you're not cooking in your kitchen. Okay, there you go. See, it's kind of like on the runny side. So what we want the yeast to do is start feeding. It's got that little bit of flour and it's gonna grab some flour and it's gonna start blooming up. So I'm gonna get a piece of cellophane and just cover it and let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'm probably gonna switch to a bigger bowl because the last time I made this, I made this in my bread machine. <laughs> what a mess. I had flour flying all over the place. So yeah. So I'm going to try to switch it to a bigger bowl and see if my mixer will cooperate because trust me, when it's all mixed up and you put this in your refrigerator the next morning, it's like kapow. It, it just explodes. It gets huge. So I'm just going to set this aside and we'll, we'll come back in 10, 15 minutes. Okay, next step. First I want to show you how it just blooms up a little bit. If you zoom in close, you can kind of see like these little bubbles that are forming in there. And that means the yeast is active, it's nice, and it's gonna do its thing. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this without making a mess, because like I said, it makes a lot of dough. Now we put three cups of flour in here already, and now we have another two and a quarter cups that's gonna go in here. So let's see if we could do this. Okay, now I got one teaspoon here, so I'm going to do three quarters of a teaspoon more of the yeast. Let's see, that's about three quarters of a teaspoon. And now I'm also going to add a tablespoon of salt. goes nothing. Now I went and I bought this bowl the other day. It's actually really cool. It's got the measurements inside and it's got this cool little handle thing. But this is what I'm going to transfer the yeast into. Um, the dough, I mean, because like I said, it gets huge. And the last time I had to put it in a giant crock pot thingy and put it in the uh, refrigerator because it exploded and it was like falling all over everything. So um, let's get this started. I'm going to try to add this flour very slowly. machine which mixes the dough really good it's just the little container that you mix everything in is not big enough that's why I'm trying it this way if you got a good kitchen maid with a nice dough attachment on it just make sure you got a nice size bowl nice we don't have flour flying all over the place not yet Here goes another. My son bought me this machine. I mean, I wasn't really baking that much. And then the whole COVID thing happened. So I started baking more. 
my day upgrade to a nice KitchenAid now that I've been baking a lot of stuff. I mean, I make my own bread now, make my own cookies. It's just better for you. This, by the way, makes about a dozen donut, uh, donuts, not donuts, bagels. So, what you can do is you make a batch, and then you, you freeze them. I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna mix the rest by hand. Put this over here so I get this. Oh. Okay. Let me grab my thingy. Now you're gonna have a nice big ball of dough. Now I would go over to um, my butcher block, but since I already started it over here, yeah, no big thing. Okay, let's get you out and let's see where you at. Oh, that's not bad. I get a few minutes by hand. Just to make sure that all the ingredients are combined. Just keep folding, folding and pushing. I mean, this is a nice size piece of dough. My other recipe for the New York style bagels, um, the bagels come out a little bit bigger than in this recipe if you want a whole dozen but I just think this dough is better I just I don't know I tried it and I've been messing with it and I just was like wow there was a bagel place on Long Island my mom owned a hair salon in like a strip mall kind of situation and there was this bagel place that was next door and this guy's bagels were so freaking awesome and they had a little bit of a sweetness to the dough. Not overly sweet, but just a little bit of a sweetness. And it was just so delicious. Crunchy and chewy. It was like those crack bagels. Okay, I think this is good. See, it's not really sticking too much to my hands, which is good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, the last time I did this, like I said, it was in my bread machine. There was flour everywhere. And in a tiny kitchen, it gets into all these little crevices. Those hard to reach places. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of flour in here Swirl it around and place this dough. See how beautiful that looks? Look at this. It's gorgeous and it's heavy. Very, very dense dough. I'm going to put this in here and then just cover it with a piece of cellophane and refrigerate it overnight. And you'll see just how beautiful. It rises and how it comes out. It's just delicious.
Okay, guys. Just a quick side note that I almost forgot, which this is kind of important. It's not like detrimental, but it's kind of important. Um, when you get your dough all put together and you put the cellophane on, before you put it in the refrigerator, let it sit for at least a half an hour. Use that time to clean up the mess that you just made, which is what I'm doing. And then put it in the refrigerator. You want to give it a chance to start that rise. And then when you put it in the refrigerator, it's already started that rise, but then it slows. And then overnight, you get this beautiful, gorgeous bloom. It, trust me, you'll see. Okay, it's been overnight. As you can tell, I'm wearing different clothing. And I just put this, pulled this out of the refrigerator, and I'm going to show you how huge this has gotten. Okay. Now we're going to take it out. I was going to move this whole setup to my butcher block, but it's such a pain to try to set it up with the camera and everything. So I'm just going to lightly flour this surface and my hands a little bit so I can get this dough out of here. It shouldn't be too sticky. Like I said yesterday, it's a very, very dense, heavy dough. And this is about enough to make a dozen bagels. But I've made them before with this recipe. The only thing is that they're not very big bagels. So if you want to make a bigger bagel with this, then it would probably make about maybe eight to ten if you want like store size bagels. So we're just going to need this just a little bit. And in the back here, I got my deep pan filled with water. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to add a little bit of baking soda. Not as much as you would do with the pretzel. About a quarter teaspoon. Whoa, that's the wrong one, Lisa. That one. About a quarter teaspoon is more than enough. Get this out of the way. And a little bit of honey. About a teaspoon of honey. And when this starts to boil, we'll know it's ready to put our bagels in. In the meantime, we can get our bagels all shaped up. Tiny kitchen. Okay. I'm going to get them cut up. And if you want to do, so I'm going to cut this in half. If you want to, if you have a kitchen scale, you can actually weigh them out so they'll all be the same size. For me, I don't really care. I like to eye. So I took a half and then I cut it in half and then I'm going to cut these halves in half. Oops, a little sticky there. Oh, we're sticking, we're sticking. More flour. And this would make a pretty nice size bagel. And I just want to throw it on my scale and see about how much that weighs. It's about 144 grams. So for the recipe, it actually calls for 110. So let's see if I cut how close I can get. Yeah, that's exactly 110. So this would be the size of the bagel. And what I like to do, I've seen people roll them out. I've seen them make a giant rope and then twist them and try. But it never works for me when I do that because the ends don't stick together and they, they come apart. So it becomes an open circle. So what I like to do is just stick my thumb, my thumbs right in the middle, and then my ring fingers. And just, oh, a little more flour. I don't want it to stick. And just kind of go around in circle. It's sticking. It shouldn't be sticking. You're not going to have a perfect bagel, but trust me, they're going to be delicious.
and you'll get that circle. And you put it right on some parchment paper and let it rest. Let's see if I could come close to that 110 again. Ooh, exactly. Dang, I'm good. I'm gonna kind of work it a little bit into a circle. And then I'm gonna pinch it like that. And then just go around, 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 just like that. See, there you go. And when you're going around, kind of squeeze it. And put it right on your parchment. Okay, I'm gonna get the rest of these on my parchment and then while this water is getting set and then we'll get them boiled up. Okay, now we got them all shaped up and we're gonna drop them into our bath. Each one is gonna go for two minutes, a minute on each side. Now I can probably fit three. That's why I like using this pot this pan to to do the bath thing and you know that your dough is good when the bagels are floating in the water these I'm going to move to the other tray because I'm going to take this parchment paper off if you have a non-stick uh, baking dish or pan I prefer working without the parchment set that two minutes over here I got my minced onion my sesame seed, poppy seed, I got some sea salt, coarse sea salt, you can use kosher salt, you want it to be the coarse, and this is to make the everything bagel, but you could certainly just do sesame seed, you could certainly do poppy seed, I mean be creative with this, it's, it's fun. And I'm going to throw a little bit of cornmeal on my surface, so when the bagels go in the oven, they're not going to stick stick because they're coming from a wet bath. Okay, let's give them a flip. And they're gonna look kind of funky when they're in the water. You're gonna look at them and go, I don't even look like a bagel. But trust me, they, they blossom up when you put them in the oven. My oven is set at 425 degrees. I have one up from the center rack. I want, I want them to be a little bit higher because it's such a hot oven. I don't want the bottoms to burn. And when these come out of the bath, I have some egg white and my little brush. And I'm going to brush the top of them. Not only does it give it that nice shine, but it also allows for this, my toppings to stick better. And you could do, I've seen some recipes where they say 45 seconds um, total time. I like a little bit longer because it adds to that nice chew to the bagel, and that's what I want. I want a crispy outside, and I want that chew on the inside. Okay, since I delayed setting my timer, and I'm just gonna flip these back over to their original side. Give them a strain. I love this spider thing, it's freaking awesome. Okay, get another couple of bagels in the bath. One, two, and three. You know what? It's not, it's not about being perfect. When you try this, some of your bagels, if you're not weighing them out, some of them are going to come out bigger than smaller and funky looking or whatever. Look, close your eyes. They're going to taste fantastic. Trust me. All right, we're going to do the topping. I'm going to brush a little egg white on the top. All the way around. And I kind of like them sitting on that, um, the white cornmeal. It gives the bottom an extra crunch. And then I already mixed up all of my ingredients. My sesame, my poppy, 
I'm just going to sprinkle, and you can sprinkle as much or as little as you want. Let's not be cheap. Gorgeous. I'm going to give these a flip. So you want a minute on each side on this. And then they're going to go into 425 degree oven for 20 minutes. When the 20 minutes is up, you're going to shut your oven off. You're going to open the door like this, that much, and you're going to set your timer for another 10 minutes. This is the fun part. I think I'm going to have to cut, make a couple of them plain for my granddaughter because she likes the plain bagels. Okay. Make sure when you take them out, you flip them back to the original side. That's that nice, smooth side. Flip. Flip. There we go. All right, I'm going to finish these up. Throw these in the oven for 20 minutes. Let them rest in the oven with the oven door open and this off for another 10 minutes, and you'll see how fantastic they come out. Okay, everyone, here we go. I let them sit after the 20 minutes at 425. I shut the oven off. I opened it up. I set my reset my timer for another 10 minutes. And I'm just about ready to pull them out. Look at this. They are gorgeous. Crispy deliciousness. Unbelievable. Oh God, guys, you really have to try this recipe. They're so good. You let them cool off, you wrap them in foil, you th throw them in your freezer, and you always have a bagel when you want one. I make them pretty much once a week, once every two weeks. It's a little time consuming, but I would rather know what's in my ingredients, and I have control over those ingredients. I can make all different styles of bagels. There's, my friend was talking to me last night about the egg bagel. There's the cinnamon raisin bagel. There's a whole wheat bagel. Um, just have fun with it. Have fun with your toppings. It doesn't have to be your straight up everything or sesame or poppy or salted or garlic. I mean, have a little bit of fun with it. So I'm going to let these cool off. And like I said, they're nice and, and they're crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Please try this recipe. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. It doesn't cost you a thing. Thanks a lot, guys. Till next time. Ciao.